this video I want to talk about signal transduction and the sort of general idea behind it and how it works. So when we think about signal transduction, we're thinking about specifically a specific type of signal, and that signal is going to be a polar signal. And the reason why is because when we think about signal transduction, the signal that's going to bind the receptor of a cell is going to be um, a polar uh, signal. And because it's polar, that means it's going to bind a receptor on the cell surface. So the receptor is on the outside of the cell. So if this here is a signal, let's just call it specifically the hormone, because that's what we're going to be using or thinking about in future videos. A hormone is going to come on over and bind a particular receptor protein that is embedded in the plasma membrane of a cell. So the plasma membrane, of course, has a hydrophobic interior, right? And it has the extracellular space, which is the outside of the cell, and the intracellular space, the space bound within the cell, um, are both going to be hydrophilic. Oops. Hydrophilic. So this hormone, if it's polar, it's going to want to stay in that hydrophilic area. So this hormone is going to come on over and bind this receptor protein. And it'll fit nice and snug. When that happens, there's a conformational change in this receptor protein. And that will usually trigger a series of reactions. That's what this, these arrows sort of represent here. This is a series uh, of reactions. Or a series of steps. Now those series of steps or reactions, what they do is they produce second messengers. And it produces tons of them. And that's what, part of the reason I have so many of these arrows here. So I wrote right here, I wrote here, why so many arrows here? What am I getting at? I'm getting at obviously the fact that there's a bunch of these second messengers that are created. And more specifically, I'm getting at the fact that large amount of second messengers amplifies a signal. So there's this amplification of the signal. One hormone binding event creates many second messengers. Now what do these second messengers do? They activate some sort of cell response. They change things in the cell, whatever that may be. Now usually what that happens, it, has, uh, it causes changes in activity of cellular enzymes via covalent modification, specifically phosphorylation of particular enzymes. Now, will phosphorylating a protein increase or decrease the enzyme's activity? Now, a lot of people instinctively will want to say increase, and a lot of the times they'd be right, but it really does depend. So it depends. What does it depend on? Well, if you think back to when we talked about protein structure and covalent modification, then you have to remember that phosphorylating a protein, or phosphorylating a protein specifically on, it's, it's going to happen on a specific amino acid residue, right? A serine, tyrosine, or a threonine. Now, when that happens, you're changing the protein structure. When you change a protein structure, you're changing its function. Now, adding a phosphate doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to change it into a structure, change the structure into a, a, a more active state. That could be the case, but it's not necessarily the case. So um, it can phosphorylation can increase or can decrease enzyme activity. It depends. Okay, it depends on the enzyme that's being phosphorylated. Okay, so be aware of that. Just because something's being phosphorylated does not mean it'll increase uh, its activity. It depends on the enzyme. Hope that video was a good little overview of what's going on with signal transduction. One last thing, I'm a tutor. If you live in Southern California, feel free to contact me via email at mufuniversity at gmail.com and see the description below for more details. Thanks for watching.